This is the skull of the loggerhead sea turtle. Given that name because of the big, massive head these animals use to eat fish, eat crustaceans, eat jellyfish. But this week on the wild side, we're not only talking about the skull, we're talking about the conservation efforts happening right here on the Texas Gulf Coast to preserve this amazing species. So let's dive into an episode about the loggerhead sea turtle. Hey guys, welcome to the wild side and this week I am back at the Amos Rehabilitation Keep uh, Rescue and Rehabilitation Center in Port Aransas, Texas on the Texas Gulf Coast. And this week we're talking all about the loggerhead sea turtle. Now these animals can grow up to 500 pounds with a carapace or the back of their shell length of up to 44 to 48 inches. This massive marine reptile uses its large head to catch prey such as fish, crabs, jellyfish, and they crush that food down. Now here at the Amos Rehabilitation Keep, they care for a wide variety of species. We've had previous episodes here about the booby, about the brown pelican, and about the hawksbill sea turtle. But now we're meeting another iconic Texas species. We're very lucky in the great state of Texas to have so many sea turtles come to our waterways. That's right, Clay. Along the Texas Gulf Coast, you can encounter five of the seven different species of sea turtle. Along with the loggerhead sea turtle, people may encounter the green sea turtle, which is the most common Texas species, the hawksbill sea turtle, leatherback sea turtle, which is the largest species on the planet, weighing up to 2,000 pounds, or the most endangered sea turtle species, the Kemp's Ridley, whose population hovers around 5,500. And of that 5,500, 55 females nest in Texas annually. Now, this is one of the educational pools that the rehabilitation keep, and they utilize these pools for rehabilitation to get the animals prepped to be released back out in the natural environment or to see how their bodies will handle such uh, movements through deeper water. Now, this fantastic species, of course, uses its large front flippers to propel itself through the water and uses its great hind flippers to steer and stop. But when they're on land making their nest, they hunch further and further and further onto the coastline. Once they get to a nesting spot, they begin to dig, <sighs> dig a big hole, and then the females turn around and deposit their turtle eggs, which are very leathery, gooey eggs into the nest. They cover that back up with sand, and then mom returns to the ocean, never to see those hatchlings ever again. Now, after 60 days, those eggs hatch, and the babies emerge out of their nest. They climb out of the nest and start heading for the water, but now it's the gauntlet of predators. It's coastline mammals like cootamundis, raccoons, coyotes, stray dogs. It's birds like uh, herons or, or different uh, shoreline birds. And unfortunately, it's also when they hit the water, they're not safe. They've got sharks. They've got big fish like amberjacks or grouper that they have to worry about. Even with all of those odds, if a baby survives its first year, it's still got an uphill climb until it reaches adulthood. That climb can be challenging. In fact, the hatchlings can spend the next 10 years at sea before ever returning to the coastline. This period of their life is often referred to as the lost years. Researchers generally agree that most hatchlings spend their first few years leaving deep at sea before appearing in coastal areas. Although the migratory patterns of the young turtles during these first years have long been a question, most researchers believe that they ride powerful surf currents situating themselves in floating seaweed where they can find food easily and avoid predators. Following the lost years, when they have grown to approximately the size of a dinner plate, the open ocean phase of their life comes to an end, and they return to coastal waters where they forage and continue to mature. As they mature, these marine reptiles are active, foraging over large areas of the ocean. Now, depending on the species, a sea turtle can reach maturity between 10 to 50 years after hatching. They will then migrate to beaches around the world to nest. Only females will come ashore to lay eggs, generally in the area where they hatched. 
Most species will nest several times during a nesting season every two to four years over the course of their lifetime. However, those odds are stacked against them. It is estimated that one in every 1,000 hatchlings survive to adulthood. Now, even if they survive all the predators we just named, and they're an adult, they still have to fight with you and me. So if you see a nesting sea turtle, make sure you give it its space and report the nest to the local conservation organizations so they can protect that nesting species. It's also very important to not collect baby sea turtles. Don't take them as a beach souvenir. That is a bad idea. Let these animals be, be healthy and thriving out in the wild. So now that we've learned a little bit about the loggerhead sea turtle, I want to point out why they're here. Why are we at the Amos Rehabilitation Keep in Port Aransas, Texas? Well, the answer is quite simple. This organization, staffed by some very dedicated team members and volunteers, is responsible for the rescue, rehabilitation, and release of marine reptiles just like this loggerhead. In fact, if you click this link right here, you'll go back to our first trip to the Amos Rehabilitation Keep where we learned all about the Hawksbill sea turtle. Well, they are in rescue mode. 2022 has seemed to be the year of the loggerhead. No idea why exactly, but on a four year average over the last four years, this facility has seen about 40 loggerhead sea turtles a year. Well, right now, there are over 160 of these animals that they've responded to calls for. Now, of course, some do wash up deceased. They're necropsy to find out what's going on in the natural environment. Others come in with injuries. Others come in with other ailments that need more further testing. Once everyone's rehabilitated, they pass all those check marks, then the Amos Rehabilitation Keep can release them back out in the natural environment. But for some reason in 2022, there's a far higher number of these animals in need of help. The only factor that the team here can see is kind of coinciding with one another is every turtle that's come in this year seems to be low in nutrition, underweight, not eating enough. Could that be a fisheries issue, not enough fish out there? Could that be some other factor like climate? Uh, the, the studies are still out on that. We don't have the exact answer, but what we do know is the numbers that are right here at the Rehabilitation Center. And this is a nonprofit organization that seeks public help to keep operating. So if you're so willing, you can always find the Amos Rehabilitation Keep on social media, or you can find them online and donate to help protect animals just like this threatened loggerhead sea turtle. Now, the loggerhead, of course, is a terrific species, but the entire coastlines of Texas are in need of your help. And some of the easiest things you can do, report any injured or stranded wildlife, report any sea turtle nests you see to local officials so they can protect them. Another big thing you can do is if you're enjoying the beach, that's where these animals live. They come up to nest on. What you can very simply do is make the beach cleaner than you found it. Pick up the trash around you, take it to a proper receptacle away from the coastline so that animals like this don't ingest plastic, get it wrapped around their flippers, or need further rescue and rehabilitation from this center. I'm so thankful for my friends here at the Amos Rehabilitation Keep for inviting me back once more to highlight their fantastic rescue and conservation efforts. And again, you can find them on social media or click the links in our bio below here on YouTube, and we will be happy, happy, to send you directly to their website. Until next time, everyone, conservation rules, find your wild side, and we'll see you the next time we walk on the wild side of one of your favorite species. I'll see you later, everyone.